Hey everybody, how you doing? Hope you're having a great day. Today I will be introducing you to density matrix theory and since this is a very difficult concept to gain a firm grip on, I'm going to try to make it intuitive for you to understand and explain in pretty s relatively simple terms um, why it's useful to use things such as the density matrix to describe uh, the universe or the system plus its path. So, first of all, when we perform an experiment, we either consciously or unconsciously divide the universe up into parts that we know and parts that we don't know. Or maybe instead of parts we know, parts we have information about and that we're interested in. And that part is called the system. And the system is connected to the bath and interacts with the bath. Now we don't know everything that goes on in the bath. The bath is a bunch of random variables that fluctuate in a way that we don't know about. So, an example would be a chemist in his lab performing a chemical reaction. And inside of that flask is his system and he presumably knows everything that goes on inside of that flask. He might say, you know, he's adding some hydrogen and some oxygen and he's lighting, well, he's putting heat into the system and from that he's making water. Um, so, in that way he says he knows everything that happens inside his system, inside the flask. But the flask might be in an oil bath or something like that. And, well, I already said bath. It might be in an oil bath. So everything that's outside of the flask is called the bath. So a system can be described by a single vector, just like we described a wave function with a vector. So this is important. We should write this down. System can be described by a vector. If the system can be described this way, then it's in what's called a pure state. If it cannot be described by a single vector or a linear combination of vectors, if not, then it's in a mixed state. So this pure state and this mixed state is very important terms in density matrix theory. And initially, they don't make all that much sense. But let's take an example of a physicist, a laser physicist, and he wants to know everything about his laser light, such as the polarization. Well, polarization can be divided into two parts. The horizontally polarized part which we can represent as a single vector, say 1, 0. And the vertically polarized light, which we can represent as the vector 0, 1. So for instance, if you have horizontally polarized light, which is like this, well, it's made up of two components. This part here, which is H, or if you want to make it longer, it's a some constant times h, and this part here, which we'll call beta v, some constant times v. And in that way, you can describe any vector, uh, let's call it d for diagonally polarized. So we can represent d as alpha h plus beta v. Now d, you, it's kind of weird because 
If I ask you if it's a pure state or mixed state, you might want to say, what's a mixed state? It's a mixture of H and V. But look at the definition. D can be described by one vector. So if we write this out, we got alpha times one zero plus beta times zero one, which we can just write as alpha beta. So D is a pure state. And the physicist can describe everything about the polarization of his laser light by the vector D. And these alpha and betas, I mean, they might not be, num they might be complex numbers. So in that way, he can describe circularly polarized light. So let's imagine that physicist, and initially he knows that his light is in a pure state, D, described by this vector. Well, that light interacts with the bath. In this case, the bath might be air or sunlight or something. So initially at time t equals zero, um, the physicist knows physicist <sighs> describes polarization by D by some vector D but after a time T not zero then he doesn't know what state his system is in and he also cannot describe his system well his laser light polarization he can't describe that by a single vector after some time. He has to describe it with something else. Let's imagine the case of unpolarized light, but imagine it's made up of purely vertical polarized light and purely horizontal polarized light. Now if you take one photon at random, you know that it's going to be a 50% chance that you have a horizontally polarized photon and 50% of the time is vertically polarized. So now you can't describe that with one vector. You have to have a matrix to describe it. And that matrix has to give information such as, well, the population of each state, for instance, how many photons are vertically polarized how many photons are horizontally polarized, and it has to give information about the interaction between the system and the bath. And that information about the populations is given on the diagonal. So this diagonal here gives you information about populations, about the populations of states. The information on the diagonals gives you information about the interactions. Interaction with the bath, we'll say. So now, let's imagine or horizontally polarized light, but let's imagine describing that in this matrix terms. And by the way, you can probably guess the matrix we're describing here is the density matrix. It's used interchangeably with the term density operator, but the distinction's not that big of a deal. So remember we had our matrix H and to make a matrix out of just this one vector, we can multiply the column vector of H um, by, well, the transpose of H, or just the row vector of H. And if you want to use direct notation, since really we're thinking about quantum mechanics here, 
uh, you would write that. So we write one zero times one zero, or in other words, we would write this. So this density matrix here describes a pure state because we can just, we have all the information that this matrix contains in this vector. There's no re really reason to have a matrix here. Um, because all the information is in a single vector. And similarly, if you do the same case with V, you get 0, 0, 0, 1. And this is also pure state for the same reason. But, let's imagine back to that case where we had unpolarized light, but it's just made of pure horizontal and pure vertical components, well then, we know that the there half the time you're going to have horizontal polarization, half the time you're going to have vertical, but the polarizations don't really interact with each other. So that's why these off-diagonals are zero. And note that this use for unpolarized Note that this unpolarized light density matrix, I shouldn't have wrote the vector thing here. That was dumb. Okay, it's a matrix U, or an operator. And notice that you can't write this matrix U as a single vector. Uh, you can try it, it ain't gonna work. So therefore, U describes a mixed state. And the off diagonals are zero because, for all we know, the horizontally polarized light is not interacting with the vertically polarized light. There's just a 50% chance of picking each uh, polarization. In the same way that there's a 50% chance when you flip a coin, you're going to get heads, 50% chance of tails. The heads state and the tails state don't really interact with each other. It's just a statistics thing. And now I'll let you consider the state of diagonal polarization and what the density matrix would look like that. So you would write diagonal polarization, X I'm calling it, as half, half. And if you want to normalize it, you have to put 1 over root 2 there. So I'll leave you to consider what that density matrix looks like. It's probably n not initially what you expect. But I'm sure it will give you some insight. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. But besides that, have a great day.